few minutes to share the word at the same time you know i was encouraged by the the testimony of george you know uh, he was sharing you know, how god is doing the things um when i was thinking about that uh, a thought came into my heart that you know when we think about the the youth of us of a church we must have a hope about our youth and also the every every youth of a church has god has a plan for them and god has a purpose a special purpose for them so that's the reason i found that i can speak something about the about the youth of the bible okay so the 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 the, the topic that we have selected from the bible for the the last youth meeting it was uh, it was the influential use of the bible right the influential use of the bible so that god can do many things in the life of the youth and also god can use them we have many youths in our church so god is going to use all the youths of our church for the glory of the lord I amen mean, for the glory of the name of the lord and we have been studying about and we have been thinking about the influential use of the bible and the first person we have taken from the bible that is none other than jesus the influential youth so jesus is the influential youth you know what's the reason uh, why i'm speaking all these things because i just want to encourage every youth of our church and they are supposed to be grateful and they are supposed to be useful for the name of the lord in the coming days amen so we are done you know we have maybe 50 years or 60 years or 65 years okay so our youths are they are growing so they have to get the word and they have to be increased by the word of god whenever we are gathering together as a youth meeting or youth sunday i mean i'll be speaking something about uh, the youths of the bible so listen you know we have been studying and we have been thinking about jesus the influence of you and we have been looking forward for many things especially uh, the life history of jesus is influential the life history of it, jesus is influential and his friendship circle selection was influential his friendship selection that means the one uh, uh, jesus was selecting many i mean friendship from different culture different background so that should be there in our in our life also especially for the youth okay so we have to select and we have to be very carefully select the people from different culture different i mean uh, different uh, I mean, background and that is the i mean second thing and again the third thing was his friendship okay the last one was his acceptance so that jesus was ready to accept everyone from all culture and all background okay so we must be ready to accept every person and the next point uh, uh, for, for for this to, i mean for today's message is uh, his wisdom okay so his wisdom yeah next one next yeah so his wisdom no i when when i was thinking about this point you know i was reading luke chapter 2 verse 52 luke chapter 2 uh, verse 52 we will read that verse then uh, we will move on luke chapter 2 verse 52 anybody can uh, read that verse and jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with god and man okay so jesus kept increasing in wisdom stature and in favor with god and man so jesus was trying to balance the favor of god and also man. the favor of man so jesus was balancing that favor of god and also favor of man you know let me ask you one thing every youth of our church must have that balancing the favor of god and favor of man you have to be connected with all the people you know jesus was having an increasing in wisdom jesus was increasing in his wisdom and in stature and in favor with god and man that's what we read that when he was 12 year old boy in luke chapter 2 verses 41 to 47 we understand that jesus christ was sitting inside the temple and jesus was impressing the religious leaders at the age of 12 with the divine wisdom so when a person is receiving the divine wisdom that person will be increased by the word of god and that person will get the wisdom to speak to the religious leaders even you know, jesus was 
sitting inside the temple and he was speaking to the people, the religious people, religious, religious leaders, because he was having the wisdom. Especially when you when you go to I mean Luke chapter two verses forty six and forty seven, it says that then after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. You know, asking questions to the religious leaders. Is it an easy thing? No. Jesus, just having 12 years old boy, you know, he is speaking and questioning the religious leaders sitting inside the temple. And all who heard him were amazed and at, at, at his understanding and in his answers. So when they were asking questions, Jesus also was giving the answer. When Jesus is asking questions, they were not able to give the answer. So this much wisdom that Jesus was having, so how can we get that wisdom from the divine wisdom from the Lord? Sit in the presence of God, pray, read the Bible, and every youth of the or youth of our church will get the wisdom from God. You have to have the I mean, divine wisdom. I mean, you have to have the divine wisdom. You have the worldly wisdom. Enough worldly wisdom you have. But at the same time, you have to wait for the wisdom of God. I mean, with that wisdom, you can do many things and you can you can have that confidence that, I mean, God's presence is with me. And again, the, the next point is uh, his knowledge in scripture. So his knowledge in scripture. I mean, Yeshu Christu in the Deva Vajana Thirullah, Aligal Thirivel Thirullah Ayirikkinna, Ariva, Vallari Influential Ayirikkinna. His knowledge in scripture, especially he could overcome the temptation of Satan through the knowledge in the word of God. Okay, that we read in uh, Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 4, 7 and 10, uh, uh, we, we are not going to read that verses, but uh, I'll, I'll let, let you know that. You know, that, that, that chapter, I mean, Matthew chapter 4 is speaking about, uh, I mean, the, the, the temptation of Jesus Christ. Okay, Satan was tempting Jesus Christ. And we understand, G Jesus Christ was, I mean, overcoming the temptation of, I mean, Satan only because the word of God was in his mouth. And Jesus was replaying the word of God. Satan was telling something from the word of God, from the scripture. At the same time, Jesus also was replaying through the word of God. I mean, the Kartavada Padana, I mean, Satan Uri Vadana Parapol, Kartava Diru, Tiricha Matur, Vajana Paranatana, and the name of Posir. So we have to think about you know when you have the wisdom of God and when you have the knowledge in the scripture, you know, every every person, not only the youth, but every person of our church must have the knowledge in the scripture. In order to get the knowledge in the scripture, you have to read the Bible. You have to meditate the Bible. I mean, then the spirit of the Lord will speak to you. When, when you have the scriptural knowledge and when you have something, I mean, from the scripture, then, that, you know, that's the reason that we are taking the Bible classes. You know, every week for the, for the youth, we have the Bible study. And for the teenagers, we have the Bible study. For I mean, Sunday school kids, we have the Bible study. And for the adults also, we have a Bible study. And for the common Bible studies for on, on Friday. You know, you're getting more wisdom. You're getting more knowledge from the Bible every day, every day. By reading and, and listening the word of God, listening the preaching and all those things. So we have to understand when a person is having the knowledge about the scripture, that will help that person to overcome the temptations of Satan. The temptations of Satan. Okay? That's what, uh, in, especially in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 4, verses 4 and 7 and 10, all those verses speaks about that. And also, you have to understand that the circumstances of Jesus Christ was not just like us. Okay? It was entirely different. At the same time, he was, I mean, you know, somebody said uh, uh, Jesus was perfectly a God, so he could uh, do that. Okay, overcome the temptation. Jesus was perfectly a God, so he could uh, do that. When we are the human people and human being, we cannot uh, overcome all the temptations of Satan. But it's not like that. I mean, Jesus was fully a God, at the same time he was 100% a man. Okay, he was a man and he was a God. When he came down to the earth, he perfectly became a man and he was living in this world as a human being. Okay, so I, I'll explain all those things maybe later. Okay, we will go to the next, next point. That is, he was well pleased by Father God. 
well pleased by Father God. When, even when Father God was sending him into this world, he was well pleased. And during the time of the baptism, and after the baptism, we read in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, Matthew chapter 3 verse 17. Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, it says that, My beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know, God must be pleased in every person, in every person. So God is looking for the people, those who are, I mean, those who are living and those who are doing everything according to the will and purpose of God. When a person is doing everything according to the will and purpose of God and God will please in him. Amen. That's what we read about Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, God, Father God said, "My, He is my beloved Son, and whom I am well pleased." Amen. So, in our life also, we should have the quality that we must be pleased by God. We must be pleased by God. The reason that I am taking Jesus as the influential person from the Bible is: let every youth of our church be influenced by the Word of God and encouraged by the Word of God, according to I mean, I mean, the, the life history of Jesus Christ. And the next to next to Point is his obedience. His obedience. Okay? Uh, and and uh, especially, we have to think about two things. Number one, he was subjected to his parents. Jesus was subjected to his parents, and also Jesus was subjected to God the Father. That means Jesus was obedient to his own father and mother, and Jesus is obedient to the Heavenly Father. Especially, when you read Luke chapter 2 verse 51, Luke chapter 2 verse 51, can you read that verse? And he went down, yeah. and he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And yeah. his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. So Jesus went to that place and he was subjected to his parents. Which means every child, every student and every Every youth of a church must be subjected to see father and mother. Okay? Bible says, respect to your parents. Respect to your father and mother. Okay? That is, that is the, that's the best advice that we are getting from the Bible. When we have to respect our, and we have to be obedient for our father and mother. So Jesus did it. And Jesus was obedient. And Jesus was subjected to his father and mother at home. We do not know where Jesus was. Maybe after the twelfth year, okay, twelve year, okay, twelfth uh, year to, till the thirtieth year, okay, twelve to thirty, okay. So the, the, it is not, it is not mentioned, it is not recorded in the Bible when where Jesus was from twelve to thirty years. But we understand that Jesus was at home, subjected to his father. I think that Jesus was learning how to do the carpenter work. Okay, so after that he came and he was doing miracles in the life of the people and he was doing many, 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 many things and molding the people and you know building the people up. You know, it, it was a great, I mean, privilege that Jesus had uh, as, as a human being and sitting at home and watching what his father is doing, the carpenting work and uh, I mean he was also learning, maybe he was also learning that. Okay, so that's the reason, you know, uh, when uh, Jesus was telling Peter, that, uh, oh, oh what, what, what are you doing? That Jesus, uh, Peter said, oh, I was just trying to get a fish, but all the night, but I didn't get anything. Then what Jesus said, you do one thing, you just put a cast your net in this particular place and you will get it. Okay, maybe Peter was saying, no, 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 Joe, Jesus, you are a, a, a son of carpenter, I am a fisherman. By birth, I am a fisherman. I have many experience. But why you are saying this now? Okay. And Peter said, no, no, no. It's not possible because I know the, all, the, all, the, all the areas of the sea. And I know where the fishes are there and the, the, the availability of the fishes or something. But now you are saying that like, you are a carpenter's son. And you are saying that like, you put your I mean, a net over there and you will get the fish. It is not possible. Then Jesus said, no, no, no. If you obey my word, Amen. you are going to see the miracle. If you obey my word, you are going to see the miracle. Amen. So this is what we understand. When Jesus was at home, he was obedient and he was subjected to his father and mother. And also again in Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8. Read that verse also. Okay. And verse 7 says that 
but emptied himself, taking the form of a born servant and being made in the likeness of men, being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. So he humbled himself into the point of death and he was becoming obedient to the point of death. You know, when Father God said, okay, Jesus, my son, you have to go to the world and you have to deliver the people from their sinful life and you have to die for them. Jesus said, I'm okay. I'm okay for that. I'm going down to the earth and I have to deliver the people and I I'm ready for dying for the people and for their sins. So, you know, there, there are chances that he can say even, even after coming to the earth also, he could have said that, okay, I cannot bear all these troubles and all these sufferings because I, I cannot die. As a, as a human being, I cannot die for the people because I'm, I'm struggling with this. He never said it. He never said it. Once he's there, if God, oh God, Father God, if it is die, will take this cup away. And again, the next sentence is, what is that? Eh? It is not my will, thy will be done. Okay, so Jesus was going through all these troubles. Even then, he was ready to obey his heavenly father. His heavenly father. If that is correct, then this morning I will request every every youth of our church and every person also sitting here. I mean, you must be obedient to the Lord, and also you must be obedient to your father and mother because you have to respect God and you have to respect every person, your your parents and your your, your siblings. I mean, so that's what we understand. You know, uh, the, the 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 points that we are getting from that. The first thing is today's message is that his wisdom was influential. Jesus, the wisdom of uh, when Jesus was influential and his knowledge in scripture was influential and his obedience towards his parents and also his obedience to the Father God was influential. So, I mean, I, I would like to and close my message today and if, I mean, time permits, we'll be, I mean, discussing the next points maybe in the in the uh, upcoming as uh, Youth Sundays. So let's all close our eyes for a, for a moment and let us, uh, I mean, pray together in the presence of God and let's ask to the Lord, oh Lord, I need the divine wisdom in my life. Even though you may be a, a youth, you may be a, a, a child, you may be a grown-up person, you may be an adult, no problem. You may be an elderly person. But remember one thing, when you have the wisdom of God, when you have the knowledge of the scripture, that will help you to grow in spirit. And that will help you to overcome the temptations of Satan. Hallelujah. We have many temptations in this world. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, we have many, many, many temptations in this world. So whenever you are going through the troubles and whenever we are going through the sufferings and everything, think about God, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went through every temptation and Jesus was tempted by Satan. Satan was offering many things for Jesus. And saying, oh, if you do this, I will give this. If you do this, I will give this. If you obey this, I will give you these all things. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. I should not worship you. I should not. I mean, Bible says, or the, or the scripture says that I should not worship anyone of this world, but I should worship the Father God. So we have to have that knowledge in the scripture. And we have to have that divine wisdom in us. Then and there we will be able to overcome the temptations of, of Satan. And also, let us have the knowledge of the scripture and also let us be obedient and let us be subjected to our parents and also to the Lord, I mean, in heaven. Hallelujah, just like Jesus. So let's take, I mean, the life history of Jesus Christ as an influential thing, an influential fact in our Christian life and let's be fruitful in the presence of God's prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for, I mean, speaking to us, God, especially we pray for every youth of our church of God this morning. Father God, we pray that, I mean, let them be embraced by the Bible and the Word of God in the coming days of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we pray that let them be useful in the coming days of the Lord for 
for your kingdom and for your glory in the coming days of Lord. Hallelujah. We bless every youth of our church of God. Hallelujah. Bless them, O Lord. Hallelujah. Abundantly, O Lord, spiritually, materially. I will give them wisdom, O Lord. Give them understanding about the Bible. I will give them more knowledge about the scripture, O Lord, in the days of God. Yes, Lord, we understand if they are living in this wretched world, O God. Hallelujah. In this perverted I mean, generation, O God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I mean, they need your power, O God. They need your presence, O God. They need your, need your wisdom. They want wisdom, O Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for your blessings upon them, O Lord. We pray for your presence upon them, O God. Hallelujah. Lord, they need your guidance, O Lord, to survive in this world, O God. Hallelujah. Pour out your spirit upon them, O God. Pour out your wisdom upon them, O God. Pour out your spirit and the, the, the knowledge in the scripture, O Lord. Hallelujah. Bless them abundantly, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for speaking to us.